Oh, we just need a. Uh, but I have to take this line. Very important. And add it. We mentioned that. Need that. I was looking for that. Very important. To show the angle of the page here. Because there's really not much I could draw on the board. I got to really just. Mm -hmm. I like to hold it. Let me see if it works. Uh, can right. I get a, just uh, like maybe two? Oh, actually. We good to start, Nick, or no? You're good to go, Nick. All right, welcome. Uh, today's lesson is going to be the ground portion of steep turns. My name is Mike. I'm going to be uh, giving you the lesson on today. Today, what we're going to discuss is uh, steep turns, the objective of what they are, what they are, why we do them, how we do them. We're going to go over some key elements of steep turns. And for this demonstration, when we get out to the plane, we're going to use the Piper Warrior PA-28-161, the aircraft that you've been doing your initial private training on. And the PTS standards for the maneuver are going to be at the private level, which we'll discuss later. Okay, the objective, steep turns. It's a maximum performance turn. Students should develop knowledge of the elements to steep turns, and the students should also have the ability to, to perform this maneuver to the PTS standards, that's FAA practical test standards at the private level. Now, what is a steep turn? A steep turn consists of a constant altitude turn in a 360 degrees, maintaining a constant altitude, a constant airspeed, and a constant bank angle, which is going to be between 45 and 60 degrees of bank. For the private level, we're going to use 45 degrees. That's PTS standards. That's what a steep turn is. Why we do it? Well, we do the maneuver because it increases your pilot ability, makes you a better pilot. Smoothness of the controls, division of attention, orientation, and also when you're, when you're maneuvering and doing a turn at 45 degrees, the aircraft is going to demonstrate, it's going to exhibit an overbanking tendency and you're going to have to show how to correct for it so the aircraft doesn't continue that overbanking tendency. And the next thing is how we do it. How we do it is how we're going to go out to the practice area in the Piper Warrior and demonstrate it. You're, maybe I'll demonstrate it once and then you can demonstrate it to me. Some key elements as I got into already, the overbanking tendency the smoothness and the coordination that's rolling into the turn you know with the control pressures using the aileron uh, being coordinated rudder and aileron coordinated turn not slipping not skidding and maintaining the bank angle 45 degrees throughout the 360 degrees of the turn and maintaining the altitude okay so at that point we're gonna go out to the plane uh, for this we're gonna either say we're, depending on the runway we're either going to go to the north or south practice area, which you're familiar with. Either one is fine. So we're going to go we're going to out to the practice area. On the way to the practice area, we'll climb. We're going to do this maneuver at 2,500 feet MSL. We're basically at sea level here, so we're going to do 2,500 MSL. We're going to go out to the, we're going to go out to the, the area. Uh, let's just say for this, we're going to use the north practice area. So upon arrival of the at the location of the uh, practice area. We're going to pick a location to do this. So upon picking the location, we want to have a location where if you had an emergency and had to make a forced landing, you have a spot where you'll be able to land the aircraft if there's an emergency that occurs during this maneuver. So that's the first. Once we have this spot picked out, we're also going to want to pick a reference point. 
a prominent point that we're going to use at the start of this maneuver and at the finish of this maneuver. So we're going to have our area, our landing spot in case of a forced emergency. What we're going to do is we're going to have to uh, perform clearing turns. We're going to have to clear the area. So as we know, a clearing turn is a 90 degree turn to the right and then back to a 90 degree turn to the left. That's just to clear the area so we do the maneuver. Now, while we're in the clearing turns, you could start, you could either do it while you're in the clearing turns or while you, the exit to clearing turn is do a pre-maneuver checklist, which we're gonna do, that's gonna be fuel full as tank, mixture rich, fuel pump on, landing light on, landing light on to make sure that we're visible to any other traffic out there. You know, it's a busy airspace, you wanna make sure that you're visible. So upon that, you want to, we're going to clear the area. We're going to be at straight and level flight because this maneuver starts from straight and level flight. So we want to be at an airspeed. We're going to use 100 knots. We're going to say we got two, two, per, two souls on board, myself and the student, and maneuvering speed at max gross rate is 111 for, for the Piper Warrior. So we're going, to, we're going to do this maneuver at 100 knots. So straight and level, we're going to trim. I like to start the maneuver on a cardinal heading, whether we're heading you know, 090, 360, 270, you know, 180. I like a cardinal heading. I also like to set the heading bug to that uh, cardinal, to the heading that we're on when we're on straight and level flight. So we got the aircraft, straight and level flight. It's trimmed for the airspeed, 100 knots. We got the prominent point. It could be a building, it could be a, a, a jot of land, whatever works for you. So straight level, what you're gonna do is we're gonna perform a left, 360 degree steep turn. So as we straight level, you're gonna maneuver the plane with the yoke. So you're gonna apply left pressure on the, uh, on the yoke. That's gonna start a bank of the plane to the left. As you're rolling the plane, you got your, your nose on the horizon. So you got your point on the horizon to maintain your altitude. So as you're rolling into this turn, when you get to about 30 degrees of bank, you're gonna have to increase the power just so you can maintain that airspeed, that 100 knots. So you're gonna have to, there's no set power setting. It's just when you go out there through practice, you'll learn what the power setting is. So as you go through 30 degrees of bank, with the still, this is a visual maneuver. So this is done all in reference to the horizon. 30 degrees of bank, you're gonna increase the power to that power setting that works to maintain that airspeed. And now uh, you're gonna keep the, the pressure coming in. The bank is gonna get steeper. As the bank is getting steeper, you're gonna, the pitch attitude is gonna start going down below the horizon. That's if you don't correct and add back pressure to maintain the nose on the horizon. So as you get to that 45 degree bank, that's where you wanna hold it. So now as you're coming around in this maneuver, the 45 degrees, when you get to it, the aircraft is going to want to keep that overbanking tendency. It's going to want to exceed 45 degrees of bank. So the way we correct for that overbanking tendency is you're going to have to move opposite aileron pressure. So as we said, we're doing this to the left. So you're going to have to input right aileron pressure to a certain point to maintain that 45 degree bank going through the turn. And also while you're that, you wanna make sure that you're coordinated, you know, that you, you have enough water pressure. Obviously you're going to the left, so you're gonna have torque. So you might not need as much water pressure in a left steep hand turn as you would in a right, but you just wanna maintain a coordinated turn. So now you have that 45 degrees of bank. Now let's just say you're coordinated. The nose as you're going out, you lose that, that sight pitch of that reference point it goes slightly below the horizon. The way to correct for that is, you just want to take out a little bit of the bank. So you were doing this to the left, you might just want to roll out one to three degrees of bank, and then just increase the back pressure to get that pitch attitude, get that nose back on that reference point to the horizon. And also while you're out there, it's a visual maneuver, you want to be scanning. Traffic, you gotta still maintain your visual scan for traffic. As you're coming around, you're gonna complete coming around, you still got the nose on the horizon, you're scanning for traffic. Now you can use the integrated flight instruction method, you know, to verify, you could check your, your airspeed, you could check your, you know, your altimeter, your vertical speed, just to, 
just to confirm that you are holding it, but you don't want to fixate it. It's a visual maneuver. I'm stressing a visual maneuver. It's done by outside references. So now as you're coming around to that 360 degree point, you're still coordinated, still got that, maintain that 45 degree bank. And we'll get into why the 45 degree bank with the PTS stand, it's a little, little down the road here. When you want to roll out, you have to roll out, lead the turn by roughly half of the bank angle. So anywhere from 20 to 25 degrees on the heading, you have to roll out. So now as, you, as you're coming around, you got that point. Remember, you started on that point, the visual point. You know it's coming, so you know you're getting to that, that 25 degrees of bank. What you're going to do is you're going to have to apply that right aileron pressure to the yoke. And as you're, as you're rolling out, you got to remember at the same time, you're going to have to pull back the power just to bring back the power to that setting where when you roll out, you can still maintain that 100 knots with that constant altitude. And you're also going to have to exhume a little bit of forward pressure because you remember it's going to want to climb as you're coming out. So you don't want to, you want to be within 100 feet PTS standards of the start of maneuver. As you recall, we said it was 2,500 at the start. You want to be 2,500 when you finish. You also want to be within 10 degrees of, uh, excuse me, of your initial heading and plus, plus or minus 10 and plus or minus 10 on the airspeed. So as you're rolling out, you're just going to roll out a little pressure, a little forward pressure. You know, you don't want to be abrupt on this. This is smooth. If you remember, a key element, smoothest coordination, coordinated with the rudder, coordinated with the aileron. You're going to roll out and you're going to bring back that power setting to maintain that cruise power setting. And what you would do is when you get the wing straight level, you got your reference points, everything, you would roll into a right turn. Now, it would be the same aspects of the left. You know, when you, you're rolling in 30 degrees, it'd be the same thing just on the mirror image side. So you would complete the maneuver of course, it's two turns for a total of 700 and 20 and 20 uh, degrees of, uh, of heading change. Now, you know, there are some completion standards that the FAA publishes. It's right here. This is their words. And I'm just going to read to you what the completion standards are straight out of the PTS. Uh, the student exhibits and structural knowledge of the elements of steep turns by describing relationship of bank angle, load factor, stalling speed, over banking tendency, torque effect in right and left hand turns, selection of a suitable altitude, orientation, division of attention, planning, entry and rollout procedure, uh, coordination of flight and power controls, altitude bank, power controls during uh, the turn, proper recovery to straighten level flight. Those are the completion standards along with maintaining the 100 I mean, the 100 feet of altitude, plus or minus, plus or minus 100 on altitude, plus or minus 10 on the airspeed, plus or minus 10 on the heading for the private uh, standards. Now, of course, every student is going to be common errors that every student makes, including myself when I was a private student doing steep turns myself. Uh, some of the common errors related to this are improper pitch, bank, power, and coordination during entry and rollout. Meaning, you know, you rolled into 30 degrees, you didn't add the power, you lost the airspeed. On quarter flight controls, you got you to gotta maintain the coordination. You gotta, the ball's got to be centered. You know, you want to be a slip or a skid, you want to keep the ball, keep the ball centered. You know, you visualize that with the nose, the feel, and a quick glance of the flight instruments. It's a visual maneuver. Uh, and proper procedure of correcting altitude deviations. That's what I'm saying, remember I stated you lost a little altitude. Instead of taking the bank out, you just pull it, pulled it back, you know, to get that altitude back. When you just got to take, you know, one to, one to five degrees of bank, three, th you know, one to five, one to three, bank out just to get that nose back on your uh, visual point on the horizon. Loss of orientation. You're coming around to that 360. You don't lead the bank angle by, by 25 degrees, uh, 20 to 25. You'll have to roll out. You don't, you don't lead it out on. Uh, you know, that the, and the student, you know, he also has to, you know, back to some uh, structural knowledge, he demonstrates and explains uh, the steep turns and he knows the common errors of the maneuver. So 
you know, before any questions, I'd just like to wrap it up with a little, sur uh, little, a little summary, excuse me. What's a steep turn? Maximum performance turn, 360 degrees in one direction, maintaining constant altitude, constant heading, constant airspeed for the private level, 45 degrees of bank. Uh, you know, why we do them, you know, smoothness, orientation, you know, division of attention, you know, makes you a better pilot. Uh, you know, you know how to correct for the overbanking because the overbanking tendency, the airplane wants to keep banking, you don't neutralize the ailerons. You know, you're doing it all smooth, you're not out there, you know, it's a control pressure. You're not, you're not manipulating it and, you know, herky-jerking it back and around. You maintain the bank angle and you maintain the altitude for the full, complete 360 in one direction, roll in to the opposite direction. You know, the maneuver is two turns. One to the left, one to the right, total seven, 720. The right is just the mirror image to the left and the left is just the mirror image to the right. Any, uh, any questions regarding this maneuver? I'm afraid I'm, this, this is the scary part. This is like, this is like the Master Jedi right here, you know? Uh -oh. this, is when, this is when you get the pucker factor. I think you did a good job. I got a question. You mentioned something about altitude 2,500. Can I do steep turns at 500 feet over the woods in Florida or like the farmland? Yeah, if you're all for that, there's nothing in the PTS stating there's a maneuver. Like if you look at like soles or anything like that, you have to recover by 1,500 feet AGL. I mean, if you want to do uh, so 500 feet over the middle of the ocean, I mean, go right ahead. So the PTS standard doesn't have a, a specific, where, how did you come up with 2,500? I like 2,500. That was just, that, that's me. I like 2,500. Uh, I picked 2,500 because we're going to park here, and I have the students uh, good judgment in mind, you know, we don't need to climb, we're going to the North Practice Area, I don't want to climb up to 5,000 and do it, when you got guys coming in on 2-2 left, you got jets up there, 2,500 is just a personal altitude that I like. I, I have another question, you mentioned something about uh, over banking tendency, I'm a little foggy, like why, we're, we're turning to the left, Yeah. but you're saying that the airplane is going to want to turn to the right? No, no, to correct for it, when you... Once you get to that 45 degrees of bank, the airplane, it's a stability thing when you get into stability of the aircraft. The aircraft is going to demonstrate negative stability where it's going to want to go farther from the initial point of the equilibrium. So when you get to the 45 degrees of bank, it's just going to want to, you know, keep going. It's just, it's not going to want to stop. It's like if you, you know, you're flying straight and level, you just... You know, full pressure on the aileron. That happens like in any. It's gonna. The plane's gonna return to you know, the point of where it was disturbed at the equilibrium. Where on the overbanking tendency, it overtakes the stability, so it's just gonna want to keep on going and overbanking. So to stop that, to neutralize it, to overcome the overbanking tendency, you have to just apply some right aileron, you know, because we're doing it to the left to overcome that. Because if you don't, the overbanking tendency is gonna overcome the stability of the aircraft. And continue into that, that left hand. Because I've done, you know, like when I'm in the traffic pattern, I gotta play a student here. When I'm in the traffic pattern and I'm doing like a, you know, 30 degrees of bank, it, it doesn't happen. Like, well, because the overbanking becomes uh, more profound in a, in a steep turn than to say a shallow turn or a medium bank turn. You know, when you hit that 45 degrees, that's when it really becomes profound that it shows the overbanking tendency. And is this something exaggerated? Like, am I going to have to yank the yoke to the opposite direction? Or is it no, no, because like you said, you want to, it's smoothness. It's just going to be more or less a neutralization. You're going to feel it. It's a control pressure when you're out there. You don't want to get to the 45 and then start yanking and cranking it over because, you know, you can overstress the aircraft to get yourself into an accelerated stall or something like that. It's just a smooth control pressure. Just... You know, light on the controls, just just enough. You just want to add enough opposite aileron just to maintain that 45 degrees of bank on the attitude indicator. And which, it's an outside maneuver. You're going to be able to look outside, look at the horizon, look at the nose on the horizon. I actually have a good picture here to show you. And also, you'll be looking outside and see the wings in relation, you know, to the uh, horizon. 
Especially can if you draw it on the board, how it's going to look. Uh, I'm a student and I want to look how a steep turn looks on the windshield. Can you give me a, a sight? I can give you a picture. Picture. Yeah. Okay. I would have put it on the board, but I don't have the uh, Wi-Fi code right now. Okay. Uh, oh, there you go. Can you yeah. That's duplicate? a steep. That's a, a steep turn to the right. Can you duplicate that? Like, uh, I'm not a good drawer, but I, I'll, I'll, try. I wanna, I'll do my best Picasso right. for you. What kind, of, what kind of view am I looking Because this is only one direction. What is going to look on the other side, too? I just want to kind of visualize it when I'm looking outside the cockpit, how it's going to look like. Like I said, this is going to be my, uh, this is probably going to be the worst drawing ever, Doron. All right. So you're going to need more. More pictures, like have more, pictures. More pictures, yeah. Phone. With your students. To yeah, I want to put it on the board, but I, I don't no, have the uh, Wi Fi. Drawing is not yeah, your, yeah, drawing is not my thing. Holding a picture, that's how it looks like. That's yeah. Like. That would be what it would look like. Um, yeah, it's going to be at that 45 degree angle to the horizon. If, 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 if we add too much rudder or not sufficient rudder on the turn, is it going to make the view different? Sure, because the noise, you're going to be either in a, sl you know, if you're doing it to the left and you got to pull the nose down because if you start, if you get to a skidding turn, you already have the left turning tendencies, the torque, and now all of a sudden you add too much rudder because you got to remember, you get, you know, you're in the left hand turn, you know, the, the this wing is you know creating more lift and more drag, so the nose is going to pull to the right, but you also got the left turning tendencies, the torque, so it's coming to the left naturally because the left turning tendencies, and now if you jam on the rudder, it's going to bring it down. What if I go aileron into the turn and opposite right rudder? So I'm going left turn and opposite right rudder. How's it going to look like? And the nose is going to go up to the horizon. Okay. So okay. You're, you're going to be, if this is the horizon here and you're in a left turn and now you add the right rudder, it's, it's going to pull your right wing back. Mm -hmm. Your left wing is going to go forward and your right wing is going to go back. What's going to happen with my rate of roll? you it's uh it's going to decrease turning steep turn at 35 degrees per second what's going to happen if i get into the 45 but opposite rudder and i'm still 45 bank but i'm kind of skidding it's going to decrease it so your roll rate will decrease yeah okay can you explain to me integrated method oh uh, it's just an integrated flight method it's just uh you know, verifying your position to the horizon, you know, your visual, you know, and then just uh, backing it up with the instruments. So you're flying straight and level. Well, obviously, you have a, your nose on the horizon. Uh, you know how your wings are in relation to the horizon. You have a prominent point in the distance. You know, so you know you're flying straight and level visually. You're just backing it up by looking at the attitude indicator. It's showing me wings level. My VSI is showing me wings level. You know, I'm looking at my airspeed. It's maintaining. So if I was, you know, climbing, it would be descending. If I was descending, it would, you know, the mass speed would be climbing, you know, vice versa. So you can look at the, you know, the altimeter. Obviously, if you're climbing, it's going to be going up. You're going to be gaining altitude. So it's just an integrated flight instruction method. But it's not, this is a visual maneuver, so you're not going to just rely on the instruments. You're doing it on reference of your nose and wings to the horizon. Can you give me one speaker just, because I'm not sure if the camera's oh. you know, just for your benefit, you know, so yeah. you know, Standing over there in the camera when I pick them up. So I asked them to move. Oh, them. that's okay. You'll hear them. Um, yeah. Question for you Do I need an attitude indicator to do steep turn? You should be able to know what 45 degree, because you're going to look at it, the nose in reference to the horizon. It's going to be at a 45 degree angle. So you should be able to maneuver, you should know where the wings are at at 45, and then back it up by just looking at the, and saying, okay, I'm at the 45 degree mark. So if it tumbles or it's not there because the airplane doesn't have it. It's a visual maneuver of the wings, the wings and the nose in relation to the horizon. You can do a perfectly good steep turn without it. Sure. 
okay? Something I got confused with was exhibit instructional knowledge when you read the PTS. What that was uh, a gaffe online. That was for the uh, flight instructor, not for the student. Yeah, because you picked that up. <laughs> yeah. I pick up everything. I don't have to watch the tape. Yeah. A gaffe means you screwed up. A mistake like, on my end, you yes. You read the PTS, but you didn't pay attention. Like yeah, I, I went ahead of myself. I was a gaffe on my... A good inspector examiner can pick up on that. And I picked kinda, up on it, yeah. kind of nail you on that exhibit instructional knowledge. I'm yeah. just a private pilot. What do you want from yeah, me? Yeah, right. I realize no, that. I mean, yeah. it's just... I knew, you gotta pick, I knew you were going to pick up on that one. <laughs> I mean, I don't play games here. I got one, two. Oh, I know. I got three. I pieces, remember. I three pieces of paper of taking notes. Oh, I know. That thing, that, well, I was I glancing. Mean, obviously, afterwards, sometimes I watch the tape and I see some other stuff that I catch up with. But you know. Not no, that. I know you. you it, 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 would it help if we had the the private pilot PTS? What absolutely, was because this is say that, right? for private. Yeah, what I recommend you do is keep that for the common errors. And look at the private pilot PTS, read those parameters, put them on the board. If you put them on the, door, the board on the prep, because you're going to have five, usually they're like, yeah, my oh, hand, I had prepared this, yeah, my hand for shot. 15 minutes, and then they'll come back. So you have time. So you can put the completion standards on the board. That's not a problem. But make sure you don't mix and match. If, if this is private, which I recommend you do, mm -hmm. keep it simple. Um, so he's not going to ask you to do both, like private and commercial? No. Will he, would, if, if, is he, would, might he ask you to do it to commercial PTS standards? Or he not? may. He may. All right, so it's 50, 50 degrees of, uh, the same, thing. Yeah, same thing. Steep turn is a steep turn. It doesn't matter. 45. Private, commercial, another little bit of. Well, the, uh, what are the show. tolerances? Of the, I, I it's the same. What's the minus 5 degrees? Well, yeah, minus 10. Yeah, it's 10. The same. I think it's 50 on the altitude, right? For the commercial? Um, you have to check. Yeah, the, I, I think it's 100. I'm not ATP is 50, it's 100, but it uh, doesn't matter, it's uh, whatever the PTS is. Um, can I ask uh, a question? Are you looking at it? Yeah, go ahead and ask. Um, you mentioned something about the the, the altitude when it's going down, like initially, like what, why, why would that happen? Uh, because uh, as you uh, increase the turn, the bank angle, you're in you're adding load factor. So you're, as you get to that 30, passing that 30 degrees, so 45 degrees of bank, your, remember, lift acts upward. Your vertical component of lift becomes more of a horizontal component of lift. So if you don't correct for that loss of the vertical component of lift going to horizontal component of lift, nose is gonna, you're gonna lose that pitch attitude. So that's why you gotta, you gotta increase the elevator Pressure that, on you. Is that the reason why the nose climbs when you roll out? Yeah, when you're coming out, you're rolling out with power because you're, you're now you're going from the horizontal component lift back to the vertical component lift. That makes sense. I got no further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> Guilty as charged? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, have a seat. Self critique. Ah. Uh, what do you think you did? How do you think you did? Oh, I'm always hard on myself. I'll give That's it, good. I'll give it Keep a, yourself to a higher standard. That doesn't I'll, hurt. I'll give it a s uh, 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10? Only because I'm hard on myself. <laughs> um, any stuff you could have corrected and done different? Like stuff, if you would have done, it would have been better. Like get it up to 7, 8, or 9, or even a 10. What, what do you um, think you could have done? Because timing was perfect. The gaff. In there. Okay, the exhibit. Okay. Yeah, the exhibit uh, structural knowledge. So I'm not good at drawing. So. That's yeah. good enough. Yeah, you know, I, I like the picture on that. I would have put it up there. I had a guy. He had a, a slideshow. He had a like a little uh, projector. Yeah, usually he has the Apple TV, but I just don't have the. Uh, I've got the Xbox Wi-Fi password. He brought to the lesson. He prepared so well. He brought to the lesson a projector. And then he had a remote control. It's just PowerPoint and like, thing. I'm sorry, guys. You're gonna have to make it dark. He made it dark, and the whole presentation was like with a with a push of a button, and it was so organized. I was like, I was really impressed. It was really nice. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, exhibit instructional knowledge. Um, I think you're too hard on yourself. I really do. I think you know, I think you did pretty well. 
Anything else you could have done better? I'd have to watch the tape, to be honest with you. Can I say one thing? Yeah, yeah. Should I stop it? Should I stop it? No, no, this is important because what he is, you know, he probably want to. I think you did a, you know, from, if I was a student, I think you did a pretty, you know, good job of explaining it. One thing I would do is, though, is, I think it's, since it was, I don't know if you've done this before. Oh, second time. Second time. But your breathing was a little bit. Nervous? Yeah, no, I'm not into the public speaking. Yeah, but I think that's the time that probably, because that's probably yeah. what happened to me. I would imagine. Well, let me ask you a question. Who's an instructor? He stands up there and he transfers the point. He covers all the elements. That's all that matters. So and it's probably going to be different when you're with a student, right? Because you know what? Watch the tape and you hear your breathing, and if it was too excessive, just maybe slow down a little bit. If, if it is, because I didn't notice it. Maybe he does because he, he does it every day. He does it every day, yeah. and he can see, you know, so. Like maybe, like maybe you, I don't, so know, it, I don't know, like, it sounded like you were trying to push through the material. Maybe that's what it was, I don't know. You think 15 minutes is not enough to transfer this, or? No, I thought it was pretty. It, it, it was just about right. Yeah, yeah. they're getting I don't know if that's enough. Because you could get. I mean, because he kept it simple. I think if you start getting into uh, low that's factor, the thing. Like, how do you know when, when, how to? He kept it simple, and I kind of liked it. But let me ask you: This is good enough for the check ride. This so is you're, you're gonna pass. Life, if you're doing this on your CFI check ride, you gotta pass. So got, let me ask you something. I don't want. I don't want to get into. Uh, we just interjected for a second. I want to. I don't want to get into the load factor, and you know, we brought up about you know why the load drops to horizontal, you know, load factor. Uh huh. You know, but in uh, real life, you, you have to, right? I mean, the student needs to know this. Or uh, that's not your job to... <coughs> in real life, I'll tell you real life as an instructor. You're going to go out there, you're going to do the maneuver, and that's it. The, really? the student is going to do his written prep, and he's going to read about oh, it. Okay. The student's going to do his own study and talk about, you know, read the um, you know, uh, pilot operating handbook and the um, you know, flight training handbook, FAA, you know, uh, book. So it's and, not your job to do that. Yeah. That's... Yeah. The student's going to watch videos. The student's going to, you know. Do yeah, that. I don't want to get into uh, now, keep it simple. Very rarely you will have a student that will tell you, I need you. I can't do it by myself. I don't have the dedication. I need you. I will pay you for your time to sit with me and teach me all these things. It's okay. Some guys, you know, they, they need one on one, which is okay. You can do it, you know. So. So, but most of the guys do home study. So, uh, for the for the for the check ride, the uh, examiner is not going to ask you anything that has to do with you know uh, you know ground school stuff like uh, pressure altitude or anything weird like that. Right? It's an open game because he will probably have the oral exam guide. Pressure altitude and density. Everything's altitude. in there. Pressure altitude, the altitude you get from the altimeter. Everything's in there. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. Everything's in there. So. Density altitude, pressure altitude, correct if I'm not standard temperature. Mm -hmm. Density altitude. Density altitude. Is pressure altitude yeah. corrected from non standard And pressure altitude not you get from the uh, Colesman window. Just put it Just in the. Yeah, it's right there. 292, you read it from the altimeter. You can get it right from the right phone. I don't have Now, if the altimeter is a little bit off, it may be a problem, but it's within 75 yeah, feet of instrument. Okay, I'll give you my pointers. Um, I think this was an excellent uh, free maneuver, free flight maneuver. I really do. I think you have a really good talent, and you're gonna be a really good instructor. I appreciate that. I, I really that. do. Thank you. you. You have an ability to, to stand out there and talk, and 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 you do it well. You're loud enough, and the whole aspect of you know teaching, you you do you you gonna do very well. Okay. I mean, most of my points are good points. I mean, it's few items kind of covered all the questions, but you covered, you nailed this. I mean, you covered every single thing that you need to cover. You, um, you did this, you know, um, very organized, very professional. You kept it very simple, stupid, and you covered every single item that you need to cover on the maneuver. And, you know, to mention a few, uh, maximum performance turn. It's not a, you know, it's not a standard rate turn. It's a maximum performance turn. You cover the PTS. The introduction was good. 
the objective was good. Um, pilot ability, over banking tendency, altitude, emergency landing site in case of an engine failure. Pick a reference point. You don't just pick a heading. Look outside, pick something, shoreline, that's your reference point. You mentioned maybe three times it's a visual maneuver. It's very important because a lot of guys forget it's a visual maneuver. Left pressure is, you're talking about pressures on the yoke instead of turning the yoke. Apply in, pressure. That's in the book. That's in the book. Okay. On the horizon, I heard you say, increasing power throughout the turn. Pitch down is the 45. So you mentioned that if you're going in too much of a bank and the nose drop, you want to reduce the bank angle a little bit before you apply back pressure on the yoke. And at the same time, you're holding the model and actually showing how absolutely inane. Very good. You want to use that model on the check ride. Over backing tendency, opposite aileron. You mentioned that. Roll out, come off the back pressure. Not as much back pressure because if you apply the back pressure, it'll exceed your altitude and end up being too high on the rollout. Integrated method. Give yourself a check mark. You asked me a question about that. Is that intentional? Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, practical test standards, heading select. We talked about the uh, exhibiting instructional knowledge that was, you know, a little bit of a I glitch. Guess. Coordination. You cover the common areas. You've been watching too much of the, <laughs> too much of I the got, video. I, I got to get, I gotta get off of YouTube. <coughs> Sorry, man. Too much of the videos, and it's like, it's going to be easy, man. It's, it's, um... Uh, I watched, I watched the, uh, I think, was it Snur? I watched his yeah. last night. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, it's good stuff in there. A lot of the critique is there, which is, doesn't change. I'm not, I'm not going to, um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I don't know how hard you are on yourself, but I'll give this a nine and a half. It wasn't perfect, because, you know, you had some... If it was perfect, then I'd have to give up flying and go pick up golf. <laughs> exactly. That's true, man. But um, whatever we talked about ground school, I think this is going to be pretty easy. I don't think. I think within five. I'll probably ask you some more questions, let you do one more for practice. So you can no, no, I'm not. Yeah, I like it. No. So you get confidence, you know. So, you know, if you pull something like that, you know, you're confident, you know, you're like. Yeah. So maybe a little more technical. Like weight and balance, you know. Explain to me weight and balance, you know, in 15 minutes. Um, but I think within five hours, we should be able to start flight training. Sounds um, good to me, man. I, just I don't see any problem. But that's what you want. You want to knock out the ground and then go right into the air. Absolutely. Be prepared. Where I don't want to be uh, futzing back and forth. Back and before. forth. Yeah. Just because then I'm just going to be wasting money. That's just no. making it the. Okay. Good. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Um, so leave all that out. The, 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 you know, the stability, the uh, load factor. Don't even put, just leave it the way it is. Yeah, keep it simple. Whatever you did was, was, um, would, would be something that's going to pass. So. Uh, schedule. When do you want to meet next? Uh, when's your availability? This is my schedule. I'm around. I'll be around till Sunday. Sunday, I may go to Oshkosh. No, no, you said that. Yeah. Um, I gotta get two things. I gotta, I gotta get a tailwheel, and I gotta get... Um, what, the sky wagon or Exhaust. Uh, the tailwheel for the sky wagon, and I gotta, I wanna get a stainless steel exhaust for the, uh, Lusco. Hey, well, we'll see. I mean, a couple of days to because I want to be there early enough. No, it just gives me. Uh, I'm not worried about that because I can keep up the par with the ground. Uh huh. I just don't want to fly and then wait a week to fly again. So, but which is good is uh, I'm off from the 25th to the uh, August 1st. Okay, good. The whole week I'm available all hours. So you tell me be here whenever. Oh, we're gonna do. We'll do a couple more guard sessions. Um, <clears throat> next one, I'll bring uh, a cheat sheet and with a fundamental instructing. 
the Reaper and all that other stuff, the Ruach, the... Uh, law of Recency, Law of Effect, see what your knowledge on Tarnum Elder Structure. We'll cover, you know, at least an hour. Good, thorough like question. What? Yeah. See what's your knowledge on those. What is learning? Learning is a yeah. change of behavior result change of experience. Change behavior result of experience, you know, whatever the fundamental instructing. And then I'll ask you questions, I'll see your knowledge, we'll, you know, we'll see how much you know. And if you are Question. studying and you know it very well, you, you're going to be fine, man. It's gonna what are they going to ask? They're going to ask RUAC, the, the levels well, of learning? They have acronyms, have well, everything. The yeah. understanding, application, yeah. correlation, yeah. the REPA, readiness, the effect, number? exercise, promise, yeah. primacy, yeah. intensity, have, have, and recency. Know, have all these acronyms, everything, so you have it ready. And uh, I have it, the RUAC, the levels of learning. Oh. I want to. Characteristics like, of learning is PIMA, PIMA. So you've been, you've been reviewing those. Purposeful yeah. experience, yeah. multifaceted. Good. You've been reviewing and, uh, those. You've had them. Goals, absolute goals. Uh, human within, behavior is uh, the I way people act predictable ways. Five hours. I think within five hours you should be knocked out with all the ground. Now flight training, you know. Oh no, I don't have a set time frame. Like you say, if you say it's going to be fifteen hours, it's fifteen mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. But like, no, I, I I I'll see. Now it would help to know the procedures, do some chair flying. You too. It would help to do the chair flying. So oh, no, I have. you watch a video and okay, steep turns. Okay, we're gonna roll. Just pretend like you're doing it. So you have the procedure in your head and the what, why, and how before you go into the plane. Yeah, I was watching it with the now, warrior. You're on a warrior, I think. If, exactly. If you actually do the maneuver and you can't fly, that's nothing I can fix. You gotta, you know. So I don't know, but for, to go for the check ride, you need to be able to fly and teach teach and fly together. Say what you're doing, do what you're saying. Okay, But you don't have to. If your steep turns are weak, we'll review those. And we'll do a couple of those before you, you're... So I will just let you do the maneuver and then teach. Yeah, no, I don't have a set, you know. Yeah. I'm so not I saying mean, I need it. If you're hours. a commercial pilot, you should know how to fly. You passed the commercial check ride. You should know how to fly by now. So I'm not worried about it too much. Mm. Maybe you've been rusty because of the medical issues and the whole lack yeah. of flying. Yeah, Which is the medical and then yeah. the flying I was doing. It was flying with Fred. We were going to mm -hmm. Marnix. Mm -hmm. You know, we were going to Pennsylvania. Tell you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do, there's no minimum for CFI. No, I know. So when you're ready, you're gone. So we'll, we'll, when you're done with the ground school, we're going to do a little bit of flying, see what your state Yeah, is. I just want to fly, and I'd like to do a little, maybe like one mm -hmm. session of ground before we go for the check mm -hmm. ride. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe knock out some spin training so we get that endorsement out of the way and so forth. And then I'm going to call the examiner and I'm going to schedule a ride. We're going to do the IACRA and everything. I'm going to schedule a ride and we have a date. Yeah, you, you schedule a date, whatever. I just take off from work. I'll make that work. You have a date. Now all we have to hope for is good weather. Yeah. If the weather is bad, <clears throat> we're still going to go. Knock out the oral. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Get the oral out of the way. Yeah, whatever it is will work. I just uh, and then go just, from there. I just take the day. That's not not a big deal. But like I said, I'm off Sunday, Monday. Tomorrow I'm out because uh, Obama's coming in. So oh, it's gonna be crazy with TFRs and stuff. Well, IFR is okay. You know, just file a flight plan and get the hell out of town. Yeah, no, I'm talking about work. No, but like yeah, for yeah, us, IFR, if we're yeah. flying with a TFR, just get out to like Iceland or yeah. somewhere. It starts at 7 p.m.? It like starts late. at 5.45, I think. 5.45 p.m., right? Yeah. Okay, so you got... Oh. 5.45 to 7, I think. So I, I'm going to be at work anyway tomorrow, and then Saturday. And then off Sunday, Monday, but then the whole following week, I'm around every day. So whatever you... Which is 25th of the... 25th of the 1st, I'm on vacation the whole week. I might just work some overtime, but I mean... Uh, I, I, I was hired to go to Oshkosh for 10 days. You know, I was like, nah, stay with me, I'll pay. I'm like, listen, man, I can't, I can't, I got... I disappear for 10 days. I mean, all the students, all the it's, it's going to be a mess. I said, I'll go for two, three days, come back, catch up on work, and then I'll go again. What are you flying out there? The RV-7. Oh, is that an experimental? Right? Charmel, yeah. The RV-7. Uh, he built it, and he, uh, wants to, <coughs> he wants to show it off. So. This is how an airplane flies right here. Okay. This is how... Bernoulli's not... equation? <laughs> Bernoulli's equation? Lift equation. This is how lift is equal to the coefficient of lift times one half rho v squared times this. this is how not P1 to do plus rho g h one plus one half rho v squared uh, v one squared is equal to P two plus rho g h two plus one half rho v squared or v two squared. 
This is the Let me break it down. Get, you want this me is to the guy that goes for a written and gets a 99. All right, look, watch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you Bernoulli's equation real quick. Easy. <laughs> if you remember half of the equation, everything is, is a con equals a constant, right? Meaning uh, the second law of thermodynamics states that everything in the you know energy cannot be destroyed or created. Everything. This is way out of my league, Nick. No, no, no. It's easy stuff. Watch. These are three forms of energy. I'm gonna explain to you how Bernoulli's principle works. You know Bernoulli's principle. Yeah. If you yeah, yeah, as velocity speed, increases, pressure yes, decreases. Is, you know, increases the pressure decreases. Right, this is the formula that, that, that explains why that, that's the case. This is pressure. Uh, we can, these are locations that it's referencing. We're going to re remove that. So you know what pressure is, force over area. Mm -hmm. right? How do you click on that? What are you trying I to do? I want to go to Samsung and see if it moved the file. How do I do it? Oh, yeah, that's right. You're a Windows guy. You click Just on that, so what do you mouse or something? Yeah, that's right. Remember when you were trying to... What are you pushing? Don't go down right here. Oh, okay. And then go to the side. Right there. It's right there. Did you, did, wait, did you stop it? No, it's no. Okay. It's okay. Everything's in there? How much uh, available uh, have on the hard drive? On, on, on this hard drive? Uh -huh. Oh, it's right here on the bottom. 937. Good. Okay, just eject. Where did you see that? Yeah, yeah there's a supply. We do supply. Okay, good. Um, so, so you have a mama, you're going to be busy. Oh, let me stop this. 